I want to welcome you guys to the January Entrepreneur Roadmap Series event entitled Starting a Business in DC. Um, at this time, I'd like to thank our corporate sponsors, uh, Venable, Verizon, Jen Shaws and Associates, Capital One, the Small Business Administration, DSLBD. At this time, I'd like to introduce our partner at Venables, uh, Aaron Singretti. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Erin Segretti. I am an attorney in the corporate group. Um, we have been partnering with the DC Economic Partnership for the past several years. We're thrilled you all are here, and I know you're looking forward to today's program. Um, just wanted to give you a little background on the firm. We are a nationwide full-service law firm. We have offices in Washington, Baltimore, um, Los Angeles, San Francisco, just to name a few. Um, we offer a full array of legal services from corporate M&A, governance, regulatory. Um, we work with a lot of government contractors, as you can imagine. Um, we have IP assistance, um, regulatory, um, and a bunch of other services. We have a wide array of clients. We have entrepreneurs. We have um, institutional clients. So it really runs the gamut. Um, and our corporate group is well-versed in assisting entrepreneurs, much like yourself, and all types of business with navigating um, the business waters. Um, and especially, we provide assistance um, through all stages of business planning from inception through exit. So again, welcome to the firm. Welcome to the program. And enjoy it. Thank you. Again, I'd like to thank Aaron and Venables for being a great partner and sponsor for us. So today's event is starting your business in DC. First of all, I'd like to encourage anybody in the room, if you guys are fans of social media, to tweet or post about today's event using the hashtags WeDC or DCBizChat. So who are we here at the Washington, D.C. Economic Partnership? First of all, I'd like to introduce our CEO and president, Keith Sellers. At the Washington, D.C. Economic Partnership, we're a public and private partnership between the district and the private sector. Our primary duty is to develop businesses and encourage economic development in the city. We do this through various means, uh, data and research, space finding assistance, many ways we work with district businesses like yourselves to make sure you guys grow and thrive here in the district. So some of our main focuses are DC neighborhood promotion, DC neighborhood attraction and retention, site location assistance, and economic development and research. Site location assistance. What this means is, if you're a business that's starting out in the district, whether you've already been located in the district or you want to relocate to the district, we help you find locations within the district. If you're a small business and you want to figure out what's the best area for your business, you can come talk to us and we'll walk with you hand in hand to make sure that you find the best area suitable for your business. We also release several publications. Um, those are the publications that you found on your seat when you came in today. Um, so the publications that we produce are the Development Report, which tracks all of the development going on in DC, Neighborhood Profiles, which has all of the metrics on every DC neighborhood. Say, for instance, you're a nail salon and you want to figure out what's the best neighborhood for your nail salon for you know, uh, you know, young people between the ages of 18 and 25 who don't have cars and they want a nail salon within their neighborhood. That's the publication you want to use because it will have all of those metrics there. And then we also have the Doing Business in DC Guide, which is kind of a manifestation of the program that you're here for today. It's all of the agencies, all of the programs, all of the resources available to small businesses to help you thrive in the district. We also participate in several programs and events to help promote DC. So one of those programs is ICSC, which is an international uh, council on shopping convention, which we go to to try and uh, attract big retailers and small retailers to come to the district. We also do space binding tours. We actually do these in partnership with the Washington Business Journal. These are events where we load coach buses, luxury coach buses, full of people like yourself, small business owners, developers, architects, people looking for opportunity areas in the district. And we tour them around the district and give them all the information on all of these uh, opportunities. For all of our tech businesses in the room, we also have the Accelerate DC program, which works with tech businesses and partners them with mentors to help them grow and also flourish in the district. Again, if you have any questions about what we do here at the partnership or would like to connect with us in any way, please feel free to check out our website, wdcep.com, or please see any of the staff members here today. So our first speaker is Greg Mena. Greg Mena attended William & Mary College 
After attending William & Mary College, friends Juan Pablo and Chef Christine invited him to be a part of District Donut, where he's used his analytic skills to really take the business to another level. Greg loves fitness and also loves to spend time with people with physical disabilities helping them. Our next speaker is Vincent Parker of DCRA. He's the Administrator for Business and Professional Licensing at DCRA. He oversees business licensing, corporate registration, occupational and professional licensing, and consumer protection. He was formerly the business compliance manager at DCRA for vending and special events. He also used to be an ABC investigator for the Alcoholic Beverage Regulation Administration. He attended Frostburg State University and is an Army vet. Um, our last speaker will be Daryl Maxwell. Daryl Maxwell is the managing attorney at the DC Pro Bono Bar Program. Prior to this, he worked in a, he had his own private practice. He is a graduate of UPenn and the George Washington Law School. He is also a board member of the Latino Economic Development Corporation. We also will be having Director Melinda Bowling of DCRA on our Q&A panel. So at this time, again, I'm going to ask you guys to hold all of your questions for the Q&A session. And at this time, I'd like to bring up Greg Mena. Well, good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? Nice and warm, right? It's just beautiful outside. It, this is perfect weather for a donut and coffee, in my opinion. But um, no, uh, it's, it's really good to, to see everybody here this morning. Um, and it, it sounds like people are coming from very different places and, and with very different interests. And, um, and so that's great, because uh, that's kind of how I found my way into to what I'm doing now, the, being part of uh, District Donut. So if you all haven't heard of District Donut, um, we are a gourmet donut company that has launched its first location in Capitol Hill on Barracks Row, uh, 8th Street Southeast, if you're familiar with it. It's adjacent to the Eastern Market Metro Station um, on one of the best food uh, strips in Washington. So that's that's the simplest explanation of, of who we are. And I'll give you a little bit more of a, of a picture of who we are by, by um, I just like to tell stories. That's kind of how I explain um, District Donut. And I, I understand I'm very different than the folks that will follow me. So I'm, I'm uh, and I view District Donut as, as somewhat of a romantic and a cool endeavor. So I, I want to give um, just a little perspective uh, from, from how, uh, how we've come about and, and how we are where we are now. Um, and so my story in District Donut, and, and it's kind of all of our stories. Uh, our chef, Christine, is here. Um, and then Will, who's our director of business development, he's also here. Um, but what I would say is District Donut is a story of other people. Um, and, and what I mean by that is if District Donut were up to me, would not exist, um, there would be no donuts, first of all. I have absolutely no idea how to, how to bake. I have no patience. <laughs> Um, that's not for me, and that's why our chef Christine uh, was necessary. Um, and if it were if it were not for Juan Pablo, my other business partner, um, let's just say the numbers probably wouldn't quite be working out. It would be a lot of energy um, and a lot of passion, but but uh, no donuts and uh, no profits. So um, so uh, I think uh, District Donut to me is a story of other people. Um, now, really, what? What I mean by that is uh, Juan Pablo and I, um, we grew up in, in the DC area. So we've been friends since sixth grade. Um, and so we've really known each other for, for some would probably say too long. Um, but what I believe it's, it's been just the right amount of time to develop a great trust. And something that you'll often hear uh, is that you, you know, be careful going into business with your friends. And, and that could be true. Um, there are stories of those things not, not quite happening the way that you'd like, but for me, it's been quite the opposite. And that's because we've, we've had a significant level of trust. And, um, and so we had a great trust, and, and he had a great idea, simply a better donut. As you'll see on each slide, you'll see everywhere, our, our concept, our dream, our vision at District Donut is so simple. It can be expressed by one word, and it's just better. Um, we didn't see a better donut being offered anywhere to this city. And because it's our city, we said, let's make a better donut for DC. Now, that's a fun idea. Um, but you kind of need a brilliant, creative person to come in and be able to take something that's actually a pretty frustrating product to make, donuts, um, and make it better, to make it high end, to make it up to the level of the taste um, that is currently becoming the expected norm here in DC. So. Um, you know, Juan Pablo happened to meet our chef, Christine, a, a gourmet pastry chef, 
um, in search of something to really um, to put her her stamp of of kind of just simple brilliance on, and and she was willing uh, to try. And um, four years later, after three years of of really working and experimenting, um, District Donut is is open. We've been open for a year, uh, and we are we're succeeding uh, in, in on several different fronts. Um, but it's 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 primarily been because of those two other people that I mentioned, um, Juan Pablo and Christine, and then. Um, go from trust to creativity to the last piece for us really has, has kind of been vision. And as each of us is, is, is 27 or younger, um, we did not have a particularly large amount of experience to be drawing on as we started this three years ago. Um, so that puts us back to uh, not, not uh, particularly experienced and we thus had to rely on folks who knew what they were doing. Um, so we have had the amazing privilege of meeting folks like Bob Jimo of Silver Diner. I'm sure at least five people in this room have been to a Silver Diner before. Uh, they're all over the DC area and, and their founder and partner and just an incredibly interesting and, and dynamic man. He's been generous to us to offer advice and perspective at different points. And, and then um, in a similar vein, Ted and Ike, who are uh, two lifelong friends, kind of like uh, Juan Pablo and myself, um, the founders of Cava, uh, the Meze, the the, fan, the the kind of finer dining restaurant in Cava Grill, which is now expanding all over the United States. It's starting in LA with, with, with its first kind of out of region expansion. Um, but again, two guys that have plenty to do, um, aside from wasting time talking to me about um, donuts and, and how to just make a few more of them in a quicker and cheaper way or with higher quality and um, with, with more ease. And, and so they were incredibly generous as well. Um, and, and then uh, in, in addition, we've had the, the kind of advice and, and perspective of one of the best bakers in the world, uh, a man named Didier, who um, actually won, and, and this is kind of interesting, didn't know this existed until we met him. He won the Baking Olympics uh, in Paris. He made the best baguette in the world three years in a row. So that I just kind of think that's kind of an interesting uh, little, little fact. But we've had folks that are amazing, uh, other people that have really given to us um, to, to help us out a lot and, and, and to, to bring us to where we are now, which is something that um, is, is something we could not have envisioned. We're, we're respected by people that, that, know, that know their stuff in the food industry. They love what we're making. They, they love how we, how we serve it and how we, we treat folks. And, so, um, and all of that has been uh, because of the support of other people, at least from my perspective. Um, uh, the second thing um, that, uh, that, that Stanley kind of suggested I, I address a little bit was how do we get our name out? How did a group of three young people who had no prior connections really or experience in the industry in which we, we uh, operate, how did we get our name out? Um, so for us, social media really has been uh, the primary and perhaps only way, um, in, in, at least in terms of, of kind of marketing, um, or advertisement, though we don't really do paid advertisement, um, social media our, and our website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, those have been very powerful tools for us um, in, in communicating, first of all, what and where District Donut is. Um, if it were somewhere, we operated for three years without a store, and so we actually would have people showing up once in a while at Union Kitchen, our culinary incubator, and then people would say there's no District Donut isn't, they just make donuts over there. There's no store. Um, so before that even, it enabled us to tell our story of who we are, where we are, what we are. Um, and it's, it's, it's free. And that's an incredible thing. It's a great equalizer. Um, and, and so from the same perspective, it's also just social media. And so everybody can use it, all the big companies as well. Um, and so we've had to find ways of just telling our unique story of who we are, the people of our company, the, the things we're making, the, the, the donuts and the smiles are essentially the two things that you'll kind of hear me talk about if, if we're talking about things as a team. Um, and so it's pretty simple. Um, it's a better donut and it's, it's about other people. It's about getting people, getting the donuts into people's hands, into their mouths and them smiling and then someone talking about that. Um, and, and so I'll kind of, get to the last piece, which is the, the tip, most difficult piece, and that's um, kind of the, the official stuff, DCRA, and permitting, and the stuff that 
everyone kind of when they hear it, every business owner, their shoulders go up, they get worried, they don't want to deal with. And again, the same thing has been the story for me. It's about other people. Um, it's been about amazing people helping me and, and uh, through an approach that my dad calls the Columbo approach. He's an old de TV detective, and he would always act kind of, I don't, I don't know. Can you please help me? But for me, it wasn't actually an act and an approach. I actually didn't know what I was doing. Um, so I, it's, 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 it was real. I think they could, that folks could tell that. But some amazing folks named Greta and Justin and, and Kathleen, all folks at the DCRA, have been so supportive and, and, and have been kind of the opposite of what you hear about nightmares at DCRA. So maybe I'm an exception. Maybe our experience has been, has been an exception. I don't think so. I just think that when, when, you under, when you start to see that it's really about the other people um, and they're gonna, the ones that are going to make you successful, especially your customers, um, when that's what you kind of rely on, then you'll find that people, they're willing to help you, especially in DC if, if you're kind of from this area and you're, you're really trying to, to communicate um, the passion you have for, for your vision and, and, um, and even if you can bring it to people or, or if it's not a, a food product, it's something you can offer it to them, show it to them, give them a chance to try it. I think to us it's always been about the other people, whether it's customers, DCRA, um, whether it's asking folks for advice and help who, who know something other than you, whether it's your friends to come into your business with you. It's about the other people. Um, and that's, that's kind of how District Donut has, has come to life. So thanks for listening. I hope it made some sense. Um, but yeah, have a, have a wonderful morning. And, and hopefully I'll talk again soon. Yeah. Again, I'd like to thank Greg for that. Um, also, I'd like to really thank Chef Christine. Um, I had a district donut for the first time about two weeks ago, and it did really change my life. So <laughs> I definitely want to thank her for that. And they also, uh, once the program is over, they have brought samples for you guys. So please try not to stampede and rush back there. But once this is done, there are samples in the back. Um, at this time, I'd like to bring up Vincent Parker from DCRA. I'd like to thank the uh, partnership for having us today. Uh, my name is again Vincent Parker from DCRA. I'm the administrator for business and professional licensing. Um, two realities of business in DC. If you're going to do business, you will come to DCRA and you will go to the tax office, Office of Tax and Revenue. Um, DCRA is the Department of Consumer and Regulatory Affairs. We're located at 1100 Fourth Street Southwest. Um, as Mr. Minna said, it's a new DCRA. Some people may have heard things in the past. I encourage you all to come see for yourself. If you don't have a good experience, email me, call me directly, and we'll take care of it. Uh, that's a commitment I make at every one of these things we do, um, and hasn't let me down yet. Uh, my staff is amazing, and we're eager to help. Um, DCRA is broad. We have a lot of things that we do. Uh, we do buildings, we do construction permits, um, plan review, inspections, licensing, corporations. The way I describe it um, is DCRA handles the who, where, and what of your business. The why and the how, of course, comes from you, the entrepreneurs, but the who, where, and what um, we can assist you with. The who is always the first step. And in our case, the who is how do you want to register to do business in the city? Do you want a corporation? Do you want a nonprofit? Uh, do you care to be a partnership, a limited liability corporation? Uh, do you want to be a sole proprietor, in which case you won't need to register with DCRA? 75% or so, or approximately 75% of the businesses in DC register with corporations for the reasons that Mr. Maxwell and others will talk about later. Um, but the decision is, how do you want to do business in the city? Uh, this, this decision has implications throughout your business operation, and it's important that you get some good advice. And I think, again, Mr. Maxwell, who will come up, will talk about how some of that advice happens. Um, that's the who. The next thing is the where. Finding a location is some of the work I know the partnership helps with, um, and is a big thing for business owners. Um, they're also building permit applications and inspections that are part of the process. But the outcome of the where, as far as DCRA is concerned, is a certificate of occupancy. That's a document that says your building has been inspected. The activity you want to do in that building is in the appropriate zone. Um, if it's a retail type business, it says how many people can be in that building at any given time. Um, and offers a great deal of information as far as where your business, as it's been created, will operate in the city. Um, it's really important that you understand that the certificate of occupancy doesn't grant authority to do business. Again, that's just the where you would like to conduct the activity that you'll be conducting. 
Uh, at DCRA, we registered 165 or so, 200 types of businesses to include professional licensed businesses, architects, uh, professional engineers, uh, cosmetologists, uh, accountants. Those types of activities may be done in some cases from your home. Uh, every building in the city requires a certificate of occupancy except for a personal home. In which case, if you're going to be conducting a home-based business, in most cases, the document you need is called a home occupation permit. Um, and I'll have my card, and I think, I think most of this information, or some of this is some of the uh, handouts that the Economic Partnership has. Um, but a home occupation permit basically gives you the authority to conduct business from your home. Um, in either case, you'll need a certificate of occupancy or a home occupation permit to conduct business uh, in the city. Home occupation permits don't necessarily allow for customers or retail type activity. It's generally exactly as I described as a home-based business. And the last thing that I'll discuss as far as the who, what, um, who, where, and what is the what, and that's the business licenses. There are 165 distinct categories of license. We have general contractors, we have uh, single family rentals, restaurants, hotels, delis, um, gasoline dealers, trash trucks. All of those are distinct categories of business license. Uh, some help may be needed to identify what type of business activity. Are you a deli or are you a restaurant? What's the distinction? Um, and that's where we can help. DCRA <coughs> will help you through that process in identifying where your activity fits into our licensing scheme. Um, it's really not difficult. Uh, don't be scared. We help customers every day. Our staff is willing and able on the phone, online, in person to walk you through this process. Um, we also have a catch-all category, the general business license, which means if you don't fit the other 164, we're going to put you into the general business license category. Um, if you're creative in a way that have, we haven't seen around the city before, we'll put you into the closest category in some cases, uh, but a lot of times those business activities are captured in the general business license. Um, it's exciting for us to announce that we will be coming up with a new online system. It's the DC business portal, uh, business.dc.gov, if anyone has, um, take a look at it. It's, I think it's documented in a couple of the handouts you have. Uh, but what that's going to do is basically consolidate the corporation and the business license application processes into one place online. Um, it's very user friendly, very easy to use, uh, and guide you through identifying what type of category you'll need. Um, it asks questions in a similar way to um, we describe it as like a TurboTax wizard. Are you going to sell food? Yes. Are you going to have more than 10 seats? Yes, you're a restaurant. Um, and it'll do that for all 165 categories. Again, so we anticipate that will be launching here in the next couple months, uh, and, and we'll show our partners that the Economic Partnership will reach out and tell you when we have a grand launch of that website that we're very excited about. Um, but throughout all of the processes DCRA has, uh, we also understand that it still is confusing. Um, it's still a lot to, to consume. Uh, so for, for us, we have the Small Business Resource Center. Small Business Resource Center is where customers who don't know where to go, who still don't understand, who don't have the resources they need, uh, we direct them to the Small Business Resource Center. It's again located in our office, 1100 4th Street Southwest on the second floor. Um, you can make an appointment, one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling. They also have group sessions similar to this. We have partnerships uh, to assist customers through our processes. We guide them through the, are, has anyone gone through the Small Business Resource Center? Anyone heard of it? A couple? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's, it's really a great resource. And I encourage you all um, to get in contact with them and come check out the services that we offer. Uh, so pretty exciting programs that are coming out of the Small Business Resource Center. We, ha we have the Small Business Express Service which is basically a program that is going to be a concierge service for business owners looking to open retail businesses, non-food based, um, that meet certain criteria. We're going to basically allow a customer to walk in and say, I want to open a clothing store here. Um, and then at the end of our program, they will have a clothing store there. And it will be held, their hand will be held throughout the process. Again, it, it requires certain criteria. It's not open to all types of businesses um, at this time. But we, hopefully it will be a great success and we will expand the operation. The other thing is Startup DC. Startup DC is focused on the restaurant industry, the food service industry, I should say. Uh, entrepreneurs who are interested in getting in food service, delis, restaurants, catering businesses, it's a similar concierge service, uh, just a much more broad uh, impl implementation. Uh, we're going to assist with the inspections. We're going to assist with 
the entire permitting process, the inspection, the permitting, the plan review, uh, all the way through licensure. Uh, so those are exciting programs that, again, are coming out of the Small Business Resource Center. And the contact information for the Small Business Resource Center, as well as DCRA, is in a presentation, but it's also in, I know it's in a doing business guide for DC. Um, I'm sure it's around in some of the other handouts from the Economic Partnership. And I'll be here, of course, uh, to answer questions you all may have after the presentations and, and stick around after the event. Uh, thank you all, and everyone come see us at DCRA. Thank you, Vincent, for that great presentation. At this time, I'd like to bring up Daryl Maxwell. Thank you to the DC Economic Partnership. This is my second time doing this, and um, I'm, hopeful, I'm hopeful this will be interesting for you. This presentation I normally do in about an hour and a half, so since I have about 10 minutes, I'm going to sort of throw the presentation away. We're, it's just on the screen just for fun. It's not really, we're not going to follow it. Directly, um, I'll tell you a little bit about the program that I work for. Um, I happen to have the luxury of following two really great um, people and businesses. I had uh, District Donut um, across the street from Blind Dog Cafe about six months ago. It was phenomenal. So if you haven't had them, you should. That's the first thing. Secondly, as one of the resources, as Vincent was talking about, at the DCRA Small Business Resource Center, if you wanted to meet with a lawyer for free, you could meet me there once a month. Um, I will talk a little bit about um, the program that I work for right now. I work for the DC Bar Pro Bono Center. Uh, we provide free, at least as it relates to you guys, we provide free legal assistance both to small business owners, prospective small business owners, entrepreneurs, and nonprofit organizations. Um, one of the things that, having done this work for about seven years now, one of the things you realize is that entrepreneurs, all of you are interested in success. For lawyers who help you, um, we're interested in protecting your success. We're also, to some degree, interested in protecting you from yourselves. Um, the great thing about entrepreneurs is, you know, if you know how to make a donut, if you know how to code, you want to code. You want to make donuts. You want to make biscuits. You want to clean houses if that's what you're going to do. But there are a lot of p potential pitfalls. And unfortunately, I don't know how many of you as kids had to drink castor oil. Any of you familiar with that? <laughs> OK. Unfor it's unfortunate to look at lawyers this way, but we are like your castor oil. We help you stay healthy. It's much like eating vegetables, too. We help you stay healthy. We keep you on the straight and narrow path. The difficulty with some of the issues that entrepreneurs face is that because you are so dedicated to success, you're not necessarily thinking about, well, actually, I have a question. How many of you have read the terms and conditions on your iTunes account? None, none of you. None of you. OK. So just imagine you extrapolate those terms and conditions to a lease that's 20 or 30 pages. How much of that are you actually going to read? My hope is every single word. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to understand every single word. The reason why the DC Bar Pro Bono Center exists and the reason why we provide assistance to small businesses is so that you, not necessarily so you don't have to, we want you to read all of that. But for the portions of it you don't understand, we want to make sure that moving forward, you don't get tripped up, and all of a sudden, you're stuck in a lease that you don't want to be in, in a part of the city that maybe doesn't work for the type of business that you have. You know, We don't want you to get into a contract with a faulty business. Additionally, while I think um, you know, examples like District Donut are fantastic, I don't know how many of you are interested in getting into business with a partner. But if you are, I always say that getting into business with a partner, like what you need to think about is, would you marry that person? Would, and more importantly than would you marry that person is, would you combine your assets with that person? Because sometimes that's even more difficult than the marriage. The problem is, is that people think in the beginning, yeah, everything is great. We're going to you know, do this fantastic business. We're going to succeed. We're going to have multiple stores. And my hope is that all of you guys can do that. 
but you want to make sure there's paperwork in place, that there's information in place, and that you both, whether it's two people, three people, five people, or just one, that you come with a clear understanding of what type of business you want to do. You come with a clear understanding of how long that business is going to go for. You come with a clear understanding of how much money or sweat equity you're bringing to the business. Oftentimes, that's sort of worked out in a conversation, in a couple of emails, but it's not documented on paper. The way that we are able to provide that assistance on a monthly basis, we provide free legal assistance um, at a couple of different spaces here in the District of Columbia. We have worked in partnership with our wonderful friends at DCRA. We have worked with the DC Women's Business Center, the Washington Area Community Investment Fund. Um, actually, a week from today in the afternoon, we will have a clinic at the Wilson Building. Um, there you can go, and it's over the course. Usually it's from 5 to 7.30 in the evening. You can go, you can meet with an attorney, some attorneys who are here from Venable, um, attorneys from, who are big firms, small firms, solo practitioners, um, who will help you, whether it's review a contract, review a lease, ask, you know, and answer some of your fairly fundamental, some of your even ridiculous questions um, to help you get a sense, A, for whether your business makes sense, whether a, an agreement you've signed is right for you, if there are some provisions you may have to negotiate. Uh, we have been doing this now for 11 years, and um, we continue to grow, and we, we continue to progress. So our, my hope is that you all get an opportunity, unless, I mean, we do not turn anybody away. If you can afford firms like Venable to provide assistance to you, please. They're fantastic. You should use them. If, you know, if you're starting out and you'd like somebody to get some assistance from, you can certainly come to us. We also provide training and education. Uh, we do trainings on employment law, real estate, intellectual property. We do that through the course of the year. You can either go to our website or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll put up some of that information later. Um, but we are an active resource here in the District of Columbia to provide you with assistance. Again, it's really difficult in the beginning to understand where all the pitfalls are. So as many opportunities as you can to get the right information and to sort of just get some clarity from our volunteers, I think would be better for you. Um, in closing, I'll just say that you'd never know in the beginning sort of like I said before, you, you never know in the beginning where the pitfalls are going to be. The more accurate information you have, the better off you'll be. I'll be happy to answer questions um, on the panel. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Daryl, for that. At this time, I'd like to invite up all of our panel members for the Q&A session. Hi, I'm Bob Reed with um, a new organization, Nonprofit Peace Through Action USA. Um, boy, I've got several. I guess the one that's, um, well, I, have, I have one really regulatory one and then one about another resource I've heard about. So on the regulatory thing, so I did the incorporation. That was fabulous. Thank you. DCRA had a wonderful phone assistance to answer a couple of my questions. I didn't realize you really can kind of incorporate in about five minutes. It was pretty exciting. Um, then I got to like this whole thing about Office of Tax and Revenue and like about 20 tabs on a thing. And I wasn't really quite sure what to fill out. So I started and I'm starting to get mail from them. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I don't even have revenue. Um, <laughs> If there's someone from OTR here, is there anyone from OTR here? No, okay, well, I will probably call them. Um, but I'm a little bit panicked because you like, you incorporate, you like start doing the next things and that's where it's like, oh gosh, um, what did I just sign up for? Um, my question is about SCORE. Um, I hear it's a mentorship program of some type, and I'm not sure who runs it and how to access it. The small business yeah, program. So, so SCORE is a SCORE is a um, organization that's run. I guess it's run sort of in conjunction with the SBA's district office. Um, it is a 
It is a group of retired um, executives, folks who have been entrepreneurs, have either you know been CEOs or have run their own businesses. Um, I can't remember their website though. I, I, I want to say it's score.org. Um, but you can certainly, they do trainings and they also do one-on-one uh, -on -one mentoring. Do you know how to act where I find it? You can, go to their, you can go to their website, score.org, um, and I know they their office, I believe, operates out of the SBA's district office, which is, I don't want to say it's like 409 3rd Street Southwest, it is. right? With the brochure. Oh. It is. that doing business guide to it. Um, we have a question up here up front. Good morning. Thank you for a very informative session. And I do not yet run my own business, but I'm planning to in the next two or three years. I have the first question is, if one does not live in the District of Columbia, is it possible to avail oneself of these services? And number two, where is the Women's uh, Business Center? I think Vincent Parker mentioned that. Sure, I can. So and do you want to take the? Yeah. Um, so to answer the first question, um, you don't need to be a district resident to operate a business in the city um, or even to avail yourself of the services that DCRA and the others offer. Uh, there are certain requirements, though, as it relates to a corporation and a business in the city. One is that you'll have to have a registered agent who does reside in the city. That can be a corporation on their companies that actually receive service uh, or who are registered agent companies. Um, that is to say, if we ever need to I'd contact you, there is a District of Columbia address that we can mail documents to, that we can serve you personally if necessary, uh, that others could find you at in the city. So you will have to contract or, or use someone else's address to have a registered agent or res resident agent in the District of Columbia for both a corporation and for a business license. But all the services we offer, uh, all the licenses we have, corporate registrations, um, don't require you to be a District of Columbia resident. The corporation is kind of different. I won't go too deep into this, but you can be a Virginia corporation formed in Virginia operating in the District of Columbia as a foreign entity. You would just have to have dual residency if it were a person in another jurisdiction, but it would also have to be registered in D.C. before you could operate. Oh, and just quickly, uh, the Women's Business Center, the, their website is uh, www. Uh, I think it's uh, dcwbc.org. Their address is 727 15th Street Northwest. The only reason I know all these addresses is because we do clinics all over the city, so I have to remember all the addresses. Uh, www.dcwbc.org, and I believe it's in the Doing Business Guide as well. Yeah. Question right here. Yes, um, so I've started step one, two, three and four or five, I believe is more money for me right now. But my question is about the home occupation. I do want to do an um, online home business, Vincent. I think you um, addressed this. But um, I'm not quite sure. The, is there a fee for the percentage of the homeowners? Um, I, I wasn't understanding regarding the permit for the home occupancy. I'm not, can you explain that yeah, a little bit? There's a flat rate for a home occupation permit, um, which I don't know off the top of my head, but I can get it to you if you email me okay. um, the exact fee. It uh, doesn't have anything to do with the square footage in the way that a certificate of occupancy may have different rates or for different uses. A home occupation mm -hmm. permit is a flat fee. I think it may be um, south of $100, but I'll get you the exact fee. Oh, okay, there is a fee. Yeah. And then my second question is for the business. I didn't understand the, um, the business name and a trade name. Is, can that be the same? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? I don't... Right. So... Um, the corporation name, um, or, or how the corporation is registered, if you're going to be a corporation, um, as an example, um, is how is the back-end name uh, of the entity doing business. The way I describe it is there are 10 or 12 or however many Marriott's in the District of Columbia. Um, but behind those Marriott's, there are various corporations, KLG Inc., um, Marriott Corporation of Washington, D.C. They all have different back in corporation names, but the name that they do business as, the name that they portray to the public is their trade name. And that's a <coughs> distinction that uh, is sometimes unclear uh, for some people who are interested in doing business. You can use your corporation name, and there are a lot of corporations who do use a name similar to their corporate name. Um, but there's a distinction between how you want to do business, how you want to portray yourself uh, to the public, and what you want to have registered on the back end as the corporate name. They don't have to be the same. Mm. 
So uh, we have a question good. here, and we're going to go here. I'll, I'll get to you all, but let's go here first. Good morning, um, panel, and Happy New Year's to you. Um, I want to, we'll be starting um, an IT consulting, contracting to the federal government, transitioning from employee to um, um, a consultant, and I will be working out of my home. I'd like to know more information about that. I am a DC resident. Also, um, how would the tax, you probably don't know that part, runs into um, running your own business in your home? Um, well, well, I'll say broadly, um, the application and license for the type of business you described, uh, we actually have a combined ap application for a home occupation permit. In that case, it will be a general business license. General. Um, and we could sit together on a computer and we could get it done for you in 15 minutes. Okay. Um, the tax revenue um, piece of every business license is always important. Any license you get from us requires a tax registration. Uh, so that means that you're going to have to go to the Office of Taxes and Revenue, either in person or online, and say that you are going to be conducting business and register to pay taxes. Um, create yourself a profile in the tax system. Um, and if, you know, in a lot of cases, it's basically, uh, it could be a sales tax. Uh, in your case, it'll probably be uh, the corporate tax. I'm not sure of the exact name of it, but that's always a requirement for any license you have to do. And again, you have to do it. It's kind of a step between the corp registration and the BBL license. Um, you'll have to do the, the tax regis or the tax registration. Yeah. Good morning. Um, my name is Florence McCauley, and um, I've started a, an adult daycare um, called AgeWise. My question is, I am also a licensed physical therapy assistant in the state of D.C. or in D.C. Um, I was told if you are already a licensed professional in D.C., you don't necessarily need a business license. Is that correct? Um, in a lot of cases, it is. Um, the license you have is actually a health professional license mm -hmm. that's managed by the Department of Health. Uh, DCRA manages all business activity aside from health entities or health professionals to include doctors, nurses, pharmacists, physical therapists, etc. Mm -hmm. um, as well as the banking industry. We don't necessarily manage the banks, the insurance companies, um, stock brokers, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But every other type of business activity uh, requires a DCRA business license. Okay. Uh, a lot of physical therapists, for example, or other types of health professionals will have their health professional license, but they also will still see a need to, at minimum, register a corporation with DCRA mm -hmm. um, as identifying who they are if they wanted to have a corporation. Uh, and they also, in some cases, do get a business license, at minimum, okay. a, G, a general business license, because there could be ancillary things that they sell that don't necessarily fall under their practice as a health professional. So okay. if you were to sell um, equipment or, or devices, for example, that activity, even though it may be small relative to your overall business, mm -hmm. is regulated aside from your health professional individual license. But again, in all cases, it's not a requirement. Um, and I'll be glad to talk about your specific situation okay. to identify if you would need a DCRA license. Also. And then I have one more question. Um, I was looking up for regulations for an adult daycare in DC, but DC doesn't have any licensing requirements for that. Do you recommend following Maryland and Virginia or just follow the train that DC has lined? Um, I'm not as familiar with adult daycares. Okay. Um, there may be um, other entities involved in that type of service. Um, potentially the Office of Aging. I'm, I'm not sure if, if there may be others who may have a, uh, a dog in that fight, but if we email, I'll be sure to get you some answers to that question. And I would just add that the Department of Health also would play a role. Yes. And you also would probably spend some time talking to our Office of Zoning Administrator to make sure that where you locate your business is a proper use for the area. That's a problem that some people who go into daycare run into, uh, especially if there's um, <clears throat> healthcare services that are provided in addition to just daycare. So there's a distinction. Hi. Um, my question was, um, as someone who's focusing more on access to capital for entrepreneurs, small businesses, I'm curious what types of partnerships or programs you have that focus on those needs, business financing, financial support, um, that kind of thing. So. Through the Small Business Resource Center, um, we have various partners. Uh, the DC Pro Bono Clinic, of course, is one. The Economic Partnership is others is another one. We also have uh, group sessions we offer for financing your business. We have a uh, procurement technical assistance program that we offer. 
Um, there are numerous partners that assist in access to capital types of questions. We don't have any necessarily dedicated lenders on call who lend to our customers, but there's a lot of information that we share and direct our customers to uh, resources who have capital that, that they're willing to, to share with our small business community. And we kind of serve as a, a resource for people because Again, as I said in the presentation, we see every business or a representative of every business. So there's going to be issues where customers need access to capital, need help finding a lease, need help with contracts, whatever the case may be. And we always direct them through our partners who specialize in that. Additionally, there's a D.C. department called the Department of Insurance, Securities, and Banking, and they have uh, certain products and partners that they can work with to help small businesses. And that's one of the goals of this administration, is to help small businesses partner with financing. It's the Department of Insurance, Securities, and Banking, D-I-S-B. And so if you go to their website, you can find more information. I would, I would also add, um, there's also for smaller um, micro lending, there's the Washington Area Community Investment Fund, um, WACIF.org. Um, they provide, I believe they provide micro loans as well as training and education. I think the loans may go up to $50,000 and maybe a little bit, they may go a little higher. Um, they're a fantastic organization. There's also the uh, Latino Economic Development Center. Um, they also provide uh, micro loans, I think, up to $50,000 as well. Um, both of them and many of the other um, organizations that provide um, assistance, particularly to smaller entrepreneurs and small businesses, um, they're usually funded either by banks or um, by the Small Business Administration. The SBA, in addition to uh, DIS DISB, also has products, um, mainly loan products, not, uh, yeah, mainly loan products. A another one I would I would mention is uh, the Department of Small and Local Business Development. Um, for those of you who have already gotten started and are looking for either facade improvement funding um, or there's a program called the Great Streets Grant um, where you can get, usually it's a reimbursable grant that you can get to support whether it's to buy large equipment or to um, you know, redo the, the front of your facade if you have an actual you know, commercial space. Um, for all of you guys in the room today, in the Doing Business in D.C. guide, there is a chapter on financial incentives and resources, and all of the information uh, they were just uh, giving you is in that chapter. Um, yes. Um, I have a question. Is the, Being a small business, commercial business, um, cleaning business, is there any way that a small business can network with the bigger businesses to get contracts? and have a networking system where, because again, we, we're a small business, don't ever get to meet none of these new companies that are coming in the city and, and we don't have a chance to actually network them to show them what our product is. So is, is that would not be available. I, I encourage you to, to reach out to DSLBD, that's the Department of Small Local Business Development. Um, Director Harvey, Harvey was at a, a meeting that we attended recently and she described how that was a priority for her agency. So I think that would be the a best source of that sort of, sort of connection. DCRA does offer with a partner the uh, procurement technical assistance course or, or program, which will offer you some insight about how to potentially pursue contracts yourself. And that'll probably offer some networking opportunities. But I think as far as a formal uh, networking setup where there are contracting companies looking for, for your services, DSLBD would probably be the best place for you to go. And their contact is in the Doing Business Guide. Yeah, I, I would also add to that just quickly that uh, DSLBD is also providing um, opportunities to network with their with uh, other district <coughs> agencies to, do, um, to work on procurement. So if you've never worked with the Department of Health and you think, and, and you think you might be able to get a contract with them, they're providing an opportunity for you to network and find out ways to um, to interact with their different agencies. And I, I think it's a, I think Charles Allen is doing a monthly sort of series. So you can you can find it on uh, DSLBD's website. I know that. Um, we're yeah. coming around to all you guys. Can I get this question in the back? Uh, yes, I'm a uh, service disabled um, veteran, and um, I'm interested in knowing how I can allow my 15 years of IT experience transition into consulting. And I also have a cybersecurity background, so I'd like to start offering that service as well. Um, that, that business activity, as far as DCRA is concerned, would be a general business activity. Um, 
I think the the uh, idea would be you would come to us if you would have to decide whether you wanted to operate as a corporation and all the things that we described where you wanted to set up. Um, as far as we would be able to assist you in getting registered to do business, uh, as far as operating the business, that's not necessarily what uh, my field of expertise would be in this case. Uh, but we could help you get up and running, definitely. Um, my question is for Greg. Um, since you're a small business owner or a partner in a small business at least, uh, I'd like to know a little bit more about the timeline for your uh, starting your business. Mm -hmm. So when did you first get the idea and then how long did it take before you started? You know, I know you worked with Union Kitchen and stuff like that. So a little bit more Absolutely. about the timeline. No, thank you for the question. Um, our timeline, as I mentioned, uh, it's now about four years. If you If you think from the initial conception of Chef Christine making a donut for the first time. That was that's been four years, and so that's that's a pretty significant chunk of time. Um, in terms of uh, retail storefront operation, we have been operating since last September 2014. That was when we opened. Um, so we've been open for you know a year and a year and a few months. Um, but there was an immense amount of legwork that went into that prior to that. That you I would never have predicted, I would never have imagined that it would take quite that long. Now, a lot of that I think has to do specifically with the industry that, that we're in, uh, the food industry. And um, typically, um, restaurants launch from other restaurants, or uh, I should say f it's much easier for partners who, you know, who have started one restaurant and it's succeeding to then say, let's start another kind of, of, of venture um, because there's a lot of upfront investment that is a lot of upfront capital required to start a, a restaurant, a production um, business, a, 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 and a gourmet kind of high end where, it, where you have to have everything done exactly a certain way. You can't just take over someone else's space. You have to build a thing that is essentially assembly line in its layout. And so all those things. It has to be specific to you, and that requires a lot of capital, significant amount of capital. And it's going to require a significant amount of time because, like, as I said, we had not, any of us, launched a similar business prior. Though our chef, Christina, worked in, in bakeries, had worked, you know, had trained in, in the technique and the skill, um, running a, a full scale operation is very different. Um, and so we were, and but we had a bit of a unique path where as we, kind of hit hit a stride into, okay, we have a concept and we have a viable product. And our vision has always been to have a place where people can come and enjoy it because it's a donut. It's supposed to be fun. It's delicious. It's something you share with someone. It's not a, it's not just a delivery business. It's not a, like we want people to come to a place. And so if that was the vision, we kind of said, all right, well, we're going to have to take time to build up to that, to raise capital from investors um, to to kind of plan what it's going to look like, the layout, the operation. Um, so as we were diving into that, something called Union Kitchen was really coming into its own. And it's a, it essentially represents a lot of the good things about um, what's going on in DC with, with regard to entrepreneurship, with regard to, to food, where everything's getting better and there are more uh, chances for people to try things that have a lower threshold, a lower barrier to entry, lower cost. Union Kitchen offers a lot of the infrastructure that we were planning to have to raise the money for and build ourselves. Um, it offers all that infrastructure and then at a very low cost, it allows folks to just come in and, you know, work on making the best donut in the world, the best, um, the best, uh, there are all kinds of incredible things have come out of that place. But we happened to be coming into existence when that was rising. So we found our way in there and we spent about a year and a half uh, in Union Kitchen, um, getting our name out, uh, literally just Christine making donuts and me <coughs> delivering them to Venable, to wherever, Who, whoever had heard about us and, and wanted um, one of our donuts or a bunch of them. and. That, that kind of, again, like I said, we've had a very kind of unique story that's always been about just other people and other ideas coming together around us. And so um, it takes a, long, a lot longer than what you think. I think that's the, the moral of the story. It's going to take a lot longer than you think. It's going to be a lot harder than you think. 
but there's an incredible amount of joy in in the the kind of road to it, especially if it's done alongside other people, people you trust, your partners, because um, it's there's nothing like it, uh, is kind of what I'd say. But longer, more expensive, more difficult, but really worth it. This okay. is just a follow-up question to the um, foreign registry. I registered my business officially in Maryland, but I want to establish an office in DC. So I would need to go through the same process as a new business establishing itself in DC? No, ma'am, it's a slightly different process. You would need to uh, get a certificate of good standing from the state of Maryland to basically say that your corporation is there, it's created, you've met all their filing requirements. You would need to submit that uh, certificate of good standing along with an app application and your registered agent information to DCRA. Uh, and you will be able to register as a foreign co company. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm, I completely forgot. She had her hand up for a long time. I'm going to get, get you to. Thanks. Um, I had a question also for Greg as a follow-up to the Urban Kitchen. Um, question regarding um, going from cottage food industry to going from farmer's markets to going retail and commercial. Um, trying to navigate that licensing part of it. Um, I live in Maryland, mm -hmm. um, never really thought about DC as a market um, because of the costs. Um, curious to know um, when you were at the, uh, like how do you, if you go to the kitchen, do you have to be a DC resident? How does that work with um, going from kitchen to the licensing part of it? Okay, so um, you're wondering, you're assuming that you were, you're starting at Union Kitchen and then going from there to somewhere, or you're just saying getting involved at all with Union Kitchen or, um, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm slow. Yeah, I guess in order to go to the commercial route, because like right now with cottage foods and farmer's markets, yeah. there's not as much um, regulation around right, it. Right, right. Um, but for commercial, you have to go get the labeling, you have to you know seek out the FDA for approval. Right. I'm um, just wondering, um, for, for donuts, um, what kind of category is that? And right. um, it's a good question. Yeah, and um, what types of licensing did sure. you have to go through sure. to finally get it to a to a storefront? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so um, between Union Kitchen, between our operation in Union Kitchen and our operation um, in our own storefront, mm -hmm. there have not been any real differences. Um, in um, essentially, we, we, we don't have we haven't we don't have to deal with the FDA. Um, that's not that's kind of another that's another category. A lot of businesses in Union Kitchen do, but they're serving kind of packaged. You know, they're making dog treats or things that 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 are kind of subject to an entirely different set of regulatory um, uh, stringency or. But in our category, where it's a, it's kind of a craft, um, artisan good that's served fresh, it's it's more of a restaurant, really. That's more of technically what I mean. Our 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 CFO, I think, says restaurant or something uh, to that effect. I'm, I'm pretty sure. So it's we're serving food live to people that they eat there. They can leave with it if they want, but it's it's to be eaten there. It's made there. Very different. That's that's a restaurant. What I think what you're asking. Um, and the easiest answer to your question is go to Union Kitchen and, and potentially, you know, talk to them because there are a lot of businesses there doing that. And they now have significant resource and experience in being able to explain this is every single thing that you're going to, every test you're going to have to pass, every, um, uh, like food labeling, uh, all those, you know, and that requires weighing and, and all kinds of things that I that are again far above my pay grade but they a lot of businesses there are doing that and it's uh, they already have kind of a base layer set up for businesses considering those types of things that want to go from farmers market small to getting it to a lot more people union kitchen and places like that there are a few more places opening like union kitchen they are equipped um, to provide that all of that structure for you or at least help you to do it walk you through it they're they're kind of like a they're almost like a DCRA of food in in, a, in, in certain ways, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so um, thank you again. Yes.